Hello guys, welcome back to a brand new video, and in today's video we are going to be discussing the 2024 presidential election and a hypothetical matchup between Ron DeSantis and Kamala Harris. Now, before we get started, please do subscribe if you haven't already, hit that like button uh, if you, uh, I guess, if you plan on enjoying this video, and if you dislike the video, or if you're one of those people who skips to the end and sees the result in comments down how biased I am, be sure to leave a dislike as well. Now, let's get started with our safe states for Kamala Harris, who's going to be the vice president. She's 99% going to be the Democratic nominee, assuming that Joe Biden does not run for re-election. So I think that she'd win, uh, actually, she wouldn't win, you know what, I'll be more conservative here, and I don't think that she'd win New Mexico or, or Colorado safe, she, but she'd certainly be favored in both these states. She carried Hawaii safe, she'd carry Illinois safe, she'd probably carry all these states, with the exception of New Hampshire by a safe margin. Um, and then we have New York and the 1st Congressional District of Maine. Ron DeSantis, he'd carry a number of states safe as well. Uh, I think he'd win Alaska safe. I mean, the state's trending to, to the left politically, but uh, being completely honest here, I don't think that he'd do poorly enough with, I guess, the Native American vote up there to, to lose it by, or to win it by less than 12%. So I think he'd win it by around 125 to 13 Although it is subject to change, and I also think that that DeSantis owed win Iowa by around twelve. And I say this because Iowa has been a very elastic state in that we see, you know, a lot of Democrats doing really well there. Uh, yet, uh, the Republican Party does, I guess, it's it's swung a lot over the past twenty years. I mean, we saw in twenty eighteen, we saw a Democratic Attorney General get seventy uh, Attorney General candidate get seventy two percent of the vote. Uh, in in twenty eighteen. And he won like every county in Iowa, even like the rural counties. Uh, however, on the same in the same year, even in a blue wave, the Democrats lost uh, the, the gubernatorial election there. That they were, you know, in the polls, they were supposed to win that election. I never considered it to be a Democratic leaning race, but Fred Hubble ran a good campaign, and I, th and I think he came and he came really close to winning that race. Um, so yeah, now I, th I think Iowa is interesting. I think we'll talk about Iowa a lot in the future, especially heading into twenty twenty two, especially if Chuck Grassley does not retire retires because. Uh, if Grassley does, because if Grassley retires, I think that seat becomes very competitive very quickly, especially if the Democratic Attorney General of the state runs. So, yeah. Uh, I, but I think Iowa, I think Kamala Harris just has horrible white working class appeal. She also just has horrible white voter appeal, white rural voter appeal. I think she'd do way worse than Hillary Clinton would in these rural areas. So, and I think DeSantis is a good candidate for a lot of reasons that we'll dive into later. Uh, but I think he'd carry Iowa by around 12 to 13%. Uh, so I think that is about it for our safe DeSantis states. Uh, Harris would, uh, probably win. She'd win Colorado, likely. I think New Mexico would, would be kind of a Ben Ray Lujan-esque margin in that Harris would, would carry the state by around 6%. But, um, yeah, Colorado, she'd probably win by 10. Uh, she, I can see you're doing better and worse than Biden for many reasons. I think she's more of an establishment figure than Biden is, even though she's a lot younger. I think she's like... Biden's 78, she's like 55, she's like 23 years younger. I'm probably wrong on her age. I know Biden's 78, but we'll have to uh, uh, tell me if I'm wrong in the comment section below. Um, but yeah, I think Colorado's going to stay a likely D state for years to come. It'll be safe if, if DeSantis is in the Republican nominee. I think DeSantis could, uh, it, you know, he'd probably do about the same as Trump in the rural area, maybe do a little worse, but uh, he's a lot better than Trump in the suburbs, and that's why I think he's so interesting. Because he has Trump-esque appeal in the Rust Belt, but he also has the ability to do well in the suburbs. So, yeah. Now, uh, I think Harris would still win Virginia, likely. Just as, you know, Virginia's trying to the left because of the Nova. You know, Fairfax County is where the Democrats get their main, uh, I, get, I guess, their batch of votes from, or basin of votes. You, you know, I don't want to ruffle any feathers with my terminology here, but I think Virginia... Uh, could certainly narrow up in 2024 if the right candidates are run for each party. Harris would probably do pretty well in the Fairfax suburbs, but DeSantis would improve on Trump's margins enough and hold his rural margins in the, I guess, western part of the state to make it a respectable, maybe eight to nine point margin of victory for Harris. She'd also carry Maine by similar margin, uh, but I think it's more important that we move on to our next uh, couple of states. Or, and also she'd win Nebraska second by like margin. At this point, it's kind of become a pretty blue area. Uh, of the country, and I think Stig Harris would win it by around five. Um, so, yeah. Now, uh, moving on to the state of uh, Kansas, I think Kansas would go to uh, to DeSantis by a likely margin. Kansas was closer than I thought it would be in 2020. I, I don't think I took a deep enough look into the state. I'd like to say that uh, I 
am informed in my analysis. Of course, I have room to grow. I'm, I'm, no, I'm not an expert, but I think uh, Kansas was one of my less informed calls. I had it as a Trump plus, I think, 16 or 17 state. He, he won it by under 15, which, you know, may, may not seem like huge of a difference, but I my county projection for Kansas was wrong. I did not see Biden winning Riley County. Uh, I did not see him doing nearly as well in the in the uh, Kansas City suburbs uh, as he did. So I think that the Kansas is trending to the left. It, it's tra- it's trending the left pretty significantly, and I think it could flip by you know even twenty thirty six or twenty forty due to the uh, Wichita getting blue or Topeka getting blue. The, the county that Topeka is in, I'm forgetting the name, actually flipped to, uh, to, from red to blue this year uh, or last year rather, and also. Or just the suburb, uh, the suburban swing. I think DeSantis w- would do well in the suburbs compared to Trump, but he, you know, the, the state's leftward trend uh, would make it like a, a twelve point uh, DeSantis state as opposed to, you know, a safe state like it usually is. Although I could see being safe, I just th- thought it was worth discussing for a while. Uh, so yeah, uh, and then Ohio, I think would be likely. I think this would be like a ten point DeSantis state. Now Ohio and Iowa usually vote pretty similar. I think Ohio voted like one point to the left of Iowa this year, which is interesting because you know. Uh, in 2012, I think Iowa voted to the left of Ohio. In, 20, in 2008, we saw a similar thing. In 2000, actually, interestingly enough, Al Gore won Iowa, but he lost Ohio. Uh, so I think Iowa voted like five points to the left of Ohio in 2000. So, uh, But these two states usually do vote together. They're kind of like, I guess, the Nevada and New Mexico of the 2000, of the uh, Rust Belt. Although, interestingly enough, Nevada and New Mexico did split, split in 2000, but that was a wacky election. I think dwelling on it doesn't do us any good. But back to Ohio, I think uh, the the turnout from Cuyahoga, people assume that just because Harris is black means that she'd get better black turnout. I don't think that she would do as well in, in Cuyahoga County as Biden did. I think that she'd see reduced black turnout, and DeSantis could even do better than Trump did with the black vote. Um, Harris would do, I, I think the suburban swing would carry Harris a little bit, but it wouldn't take her very far, considering the fact that, the tan, that Ron DeSantis is better than Donald Trump in the suburbs. Plus, he has the Trumpian rural and, and white working class appeal. He'd probably hold on to Mahoning County. He'd probably hold on to Trumbull. Um, and, and he'd probably hold on to Lake County as well, although that's a suburban county that could potentially slip by 2028 or 2024, depending on who the Democrats run. But like I've always said, DeSantis is a great candidate, and I think he'd be able to carry Ohio uh, by a, you know, improve on Trump's margin there. Um, South Carolina, he'd also win likely. He'd, I think Florida is, is debatably likely, but I, I'm not going to put it as likely, uh, but it'll be lean. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that in a second. Uh, but it's important that we move on to the lean Harris states. I think that Harris would probably end up carrying Minnesota by a lean margin. And, you know, the Rust Belt is interesting here because DeSantis is less populous than Trump, but he still has the Trumpian appeal because the because he's beloved to the Trump base. And, you know, uh, a lot of these Trump voters are white, are Obama, uh, white working class voters who have been, you know, I guess Democrats for a while. I think the best example is looking at the swing in counties in the western part of Wisconsin near the La Crosse area, and you can see that that the Democratic Party is losing voters there. And not only are they losing voters, uh, it, it's important because these white working class voters, they're not only swinging in Wisconsin, they're swinging in Michigan, they're swinging in Pennsylvania, and they're swinging in Ohio as well. So, yeah. But I think Minnesota, I think the suburbs w- would come out for Harris, uh, and she'd maintain, I guess she'd maybe do a little worse than Biden, but she'd still do well enough to hold the state. By a reduced margin, uh, she'd also uh, lose, uh, or I guess... But she'd do worse than Biden in the Iron Range. I think Biden outperformed, uh, overperformed in the Iron Iron Range, and we could potentially be looking at Kamala Harris actually losing Lake County. If I'm if I'm referring to the uh, the correct uh, county, it's um, kind of in between. Uh, wait, no, excuse me. I'm, I think I think I'm referring to Lake County. I, I I might have bungled that term right there, but I think that she could potentially lose Lake County. We'll have to see though, if this is the matchup. Um, so yeah, and then New Hampshire. She told on New Hampshire by a lean margin. Uh, just because you know, I I think she it it, it, it will just do better in the southern part of the state, which is where more of the population is. Obviously, you know, Coos County isn't the big population center of the state, despite it being the largest county by area. But uh, I think it's more important that we move on to Maine Second District, where I think DeSantis would win by around five. I think it could be likely, but I'm going to be more conservative here because this is very early, so I don't want to make any like weird calls. Like you know, I was debating putting putting um. Uh, you know, New Mexico is a lean. I didn't do that. And I was debating uh, putting uh, Maine, uh, the second district, as likely, but we're just going to keep it as a lean for right now. But let's move on to Texas and Florida. These are two Sun Belt states that are absolutely critical for the Republican Party. And, you, and, you know, if you're looking at the tally at the top, you can probably tell why, because without them, Ron DeSantis was, was barely cracking 140. And he's now, uh, since he's, when you add these states to his uh, column, he uh, gets back up to 220 right next to Kamala Harris, despite the fact that Harris has, you know, we've already projected uh, New York and California for her, which are the two biggest safe blue states. 
So the Republicans have no chance of winning any elections or that are, uh, I guess, federal elections, presidential elections. If they don't win both Texas and Florida, if they lose one, they're done, especially if it's Texas. We can play around with the map and find a scenario where the Democrats hold on to Florida or win Florida, but the Republicans still win the election. Yeah, and we can do that, but being, being realistic here, it's it's very unlikely, especially as a governor of Florida. The, governor DeSantis w- would lose his home state and manage to hold on uh, to enough states to win a federal election against Kamala Harris. So I think DeSantis, you know, I've, I've gotten mixture of views. I've seen people who don't like DeSantis who live in Florida and say he's unpopular, and I've gotten people who really do like DeSantis. Um, so... I think it's just safe to see that Florida would stay similar. I think DeSantis would actually do a little better than Trump, or a little worse, excuse me, a little worse than Trump in the Miami-Dade, Broward, Palm Beach area, but I think he'd do better upstate than Trump, uh, especially in, in places like Duval and Pinellas. I think uh, DeSantis did lose both these counties in 2018 when he uh, ran for uh, his first term as governor, but I think that the you know Trump doing poorly in, in, the, in the Jacksonville suburbs and the fact that Tampa Bay really, you know, the Tampa Bay area wasn't super friendly for Trump. I think DeSantis could make inroads there. He'd do about the same in the Panhandle as well. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Texas, I just think, you know, the trends are certainly shifting the state bluer, but I think DeSantis would offset Harris's gains with the Hispanic population, do better in the suburbs to keep it a relatively uh, good Republican state. say four points for the Republican Party. Uh, so, I also think he would North Carolina by a lean margin. Uh, this is, I think DeSantis is an exceptional candidate, because like I mentioned, he has the Trump-based appeal, but he also has the suburban appeal, and I think he'd be able to appeal to North Carolina, which is a suburban state. You know, they have a uh, high concentration of black voters in Wake County. You have a high concentration of black voters in the uh, Greensboro area. You have a high concentration of black voters in Durham. And you can name all these cities in North Carolina that are, you know, around 500,000 people large. Fayetteville is another one, but um, I don't see DeSantis doing poorly enough in the suburbs to make it even as competitive as it was in 2020, where Trump won the state by over 1%. Um, so, yeah. Now, for Kara, she has some lean states as well. I think that she managed to hold on to uh, Nevada, or by tilt states. I think she managed to hold on to Nevada by tilt margin. But she'd do worse than Biden and Clark. She'd probably, or actually, no, she'd do about the same as Biden and Clark, because on one hand, I think DeSantis would do better with Hispanics than Trump. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, I mean, Harris being the half incumbent would help her with Hispanics, because as I mentioned in previous videos, Hispanics trend towards the incumbent. Uh, Bush improved with Hispanics in 2004. Biden improved, with, or Obama improved with Hispanics in 2012, and uh, Donald Trump improved in 2020 with them. But I think DeSantis could uh, do about the same in uh, the rural part of the state, uh, do a little, maybe a little worse, or about the same in Clark. But he'd probably do better in Washoe. I think he'd do a lot better in Washoe. He'd probably only lose a by around three or maybe even two, as opposed to Trump who lost it by nearly five. So I think that would make the state narrow up to around a two-point Harris state. But I think that's going to be it for our Tilt Harris state. So yes, Ron DeSantis would win this hypothetical matchup against Kamala Harris. Now, there, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to obviously explain all these calls, and this is going to be a controversial video because I know a lot of you, you know, you don't want to see, I guess, re- Republican victories in 2024. But I think that DeSantis is an exceptional candidate. <laughs> Excuse me. I think he's an exceptional candidate, and I think that, you know, really... Uh, he has the ability to channel uh, not Romney numbers in the suburbs, but he'd do better than Trump. And I think he'd do about the same in the rural areas, which is why he's so good. And I think that, you know, if the Republicans want a chance of winning in 2024, they should absolutely run DeSantis. Um, and I think he has a great, he has a bright political future. You know, he took a lot of heat back in, I guess, April and May for his coronavirus handling or even June into July. But, you know, really, I think Florida, people are starting to uh, stop memeing Florida for the handling of coronavirus. Again, I'm not going to talk about my views on DeSantis or my views on Kamala Harris for that matter. But I do think that, you know, DeSantis is surging in popularity and denying that would not be living up to my unbiased name. So I think DeSantis would, first of all, to get uh, to kill two birds with, with the one star, I think he'd win Arizona and Georgia, Arizona and Georgia, um, by barely under 1%. I think he'd win back Maricopa County uh, because I th- I think that his tr- I, he has a lot of Trump's, Trump-esque policies, which is why he'd do well in the rural areas and the white working class. But his rhetoric is, is nowhere near as, I guess, self-destructive as Trump was in 2020. And, you know, Trump's Trump's rhetoric was self-destructive in 2020. It's not going to happen, uh, and I think that it did really uh, result in a lot of unnecessary losses that he took. He lost a lot of voters with his rhetoric. I think that had he, you know, in some cases kept his mouth shut or said or worked to phrase things better, he could have won the election. Oh my gosh, that was horrible. He could have won the election. So uh, I do think uh, that DeSantis w- w- would be better at this than Trump would, and I think he'd carry Arizona as a result. He'd do well, well enough in, in the Georgia. He, he'd I wouldn't bet on him winning Gwinnett or Henry or Newton counties or even Cobb County, but uh, he'd make it narrower. And I think that he would, uh, and in the in the end, as a result of this, 
Chima Trump's Royal Margins wins the of Georgia. Now for the Rust Belt, I really think the Rust Belt is not trending red the way people think it is. I think Wisconsin is, but Michigan and Pennsylvania are actually trending blue. And you, should, and you should read my article about that. It's linked in the description. It's on Substack. It's the title of my newsletter. But um, yeah, so I think Wisconsin, I think DeSantis would uh, maybe do a little worse. I mean, it, I think for a candidate, DeSantis is a little worse than Trump with the uh, white working class, like I mentioned, in western Wisconsin that make up such a big part of the electorate. But Harris is also worse than Biden for that regard, so I think he'd do about the same. And I think he'd do better with seniors, obviously. He'd probably flip Door County back to the Republican Party. He'd probably uh, do better in the suburbs. I think that he'd uh, win uh, the state of Wisconsin uh, very narrowly. He'd also carry Michigan by the narrowest out of all these. Michigan is a bit a bit bluer than the rest of the Rust Belt because of the fact that you have a lot of medium-sized cities. Obviously, Detroit is the big population center, but you have Ann, Ann Arbor, you have Grand Rapids, you have Kalamazoo, uh, you have... Um, I'm trying to think of uh, Grand, Grand Traverse is another one you have. Uh, I know I'm forgetting it. Lansing is the capital of the state. You have you know these me- more medium sized cities that are uh, really helping Democrats get more votes. And and the, you know D- Detroit is is starting to grow back again. It, it's not you know growing the, at the rate it was in the 70s and 80s, but it's still growing back. And I think that uh, it, it's going to help Democrats in the future. But uh, I think the Michigan is is going to uh, flip red if DeSantis runs. If not, it's just probably lean Democratic. Pennsylvania. I've talked. I've spoken a lot about Pennsylvania, and I, and I plan on going into a deep dive in the state because I think it's so fascinating politically. I think there are a lot of states that I find fascinating. I think Nevada and Pennsylvania are the two most fascinating states, and I think we can go really for Nevada because they don't have too many counties. I think I think we can go county by county and take a look at Nevada. But yeah, so I think that uh, Pennsylvania is very very elastic in some regards. Some of the counties, like you know, the counties in the western part of the state near Pittsburgh, like Beaver County, is is a good example, are very elastic. Uh, but I think Pennsylvania would hold for the uh, or would actually flip for DeSantis, uh, and I think that you know he he'd do well enough in the Philly suburbs. He might he might win back Chester. No, excuse me. He, he might win back um, some of these more. Uh, I've, I've forgotten the names. I'm I'm sorry. I, I'm having a uh, mental block. I guess I think he'd do well enough in the Philly suburbs to flip the state uh, to offset. I guess Harris's. Mm, I'm, I don't even like. I'm not even sure if I want to call it uh, rural gains because I think DeSantis would do as well as Trump did in the rural areas of the state. So that's it. This is your final map. 308 electoral votes for uh, Ron DeSantis, 230 for Kamala Harris. And if you enjoyed, like, subscribe, you know you, you know what to do. Share with your friends. Um, so thank you all for watching. Also, I think when's Valentine's Day? Happy Valentine's Day, I guess, if you celebrate that. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.